I'll do the driver's side for where the I'm sorry, the passenger side. That's the harder side. Ow, I bonked my head. That's like the fifth here. I'll finish it up. For Damn. Let me get here. This looks brutal now. I'm getting pushed around now. Well, maybe you should put the camera down. Hey, you oh, film it no. too. Nope. There it is. There's a tornado right there. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back at it again today. Day number two or three. I don't even know. But today's mission is to get all of this apart of the intake manifold off of the uh, Shelby GT350R and we're going to be doing some headers, some turbo headers and start the turbo process. So we got to get the intake manifold off. Now is a good time that we're also going to be doing our IMRC lockout. And then eventually when we button this back up, we're going to do the injectors and the fuel rails. Now we're going to sort through some tools. First thing we need to do is unplug fuel or fuel pump delivery module back here so it's going to be located let's make sure we don't bang any doors located underneath the seat back here by your fuel hats these recaros are so nice the module is actually right back down here we're going to unplug it that way we don't soak ourselves with fuel this is what we're going to be deleting is all this mess back here this vacuum line all this imrc stuff and capping it off and should be easy no yeah this fuel's undone fuel's undone yep there's a mouse what? there's a mouse that just like ran from like here he's chilling over there Woo. like i said guys take your time doing this make sure you get it right there's a lot of variables in this it looks like i need to do i need to unclip this hose this fuel line here is this fuel no, this is not fuel. This is vacuum. This is fuel. All this is going to actually get deleted. So let me get. Why is that? Uh, Why is that? No, 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 no. These, yeah. Those on there are 8 mil. Come on, there we go. That's off. Xander's undoing this uh, vacuum hose here. Just be patient with it, guys. Work with it. Special tool that you usually use. Well, at least. Oh, I just. Oh, wow. See, on GM, you need a tool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the little push things. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, there it is. It's in my eyes. <laughs> ah, you want to grab that other side, pretty please? What do I need to grab, Alex? You're gonna grab here and here on the fuel rail. We're gonna lift straight up. One, two. Yeah, just wiggle it. They don't have to come up together. It's just there we go. Keep it uh, just like this. Otherwise, it's gonna dump everywhere. Cause that's my injection. Yep. And then we can uh, set that on top of this over here. No need to throw away you know good brand new good uh injectors even though they are going to get upgraded to yeah, the definitely. awesome 1000 cc ejectors from fuel injector clinic same ones i've got in my red mustang over here yeah, but definitely. we have one two three and then six so one two three one two three six eight mil belts on the intake manifold itself. i actually have a wonderful way of narrating things you know that i try <laughs> really good when it's like your car, especially like this voodoo. Yeah. It's like just trying to concentrate, especially when you haven't done some of this stuff before. You know what I mean? Well, guys, Determined Veteran, his YouTube channel. This is obviously his car. If you've missed the other couple of videos prior to this one, click the card above. This is your first time really getting into like this, yeah, this level yeah. of involvement. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I've never, ever done... A lot of stuff we've done in the last couple of days in my life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, and I'm not he's, a Mustang guy. I'm a GM guy. So I'm used to GM stuff, but this is all new to me. Yeah, well, he's a little bit out of his element. So we are uh, coaching, mentoring, teaching as much as possible. But everything, yeah, exactly. Just uh, all it takes is just getting your hands dirty a little bit and figuring things out. It's all nuts and bolts, guys. I mean, a lot of this stuff looks crazy, but it's nuts and bolts at the end of the day. It went together a certain way, and you put it back together a certain way. The GT350 manifold, you got two plugs. They're a little bit tricky. Kind of like these, you push down on the clips and then you gotta push in. There's just not a lot of room. Gotcha. Okay, try to lift up now. Wow, look at that. It's just, it's a straight Gen 2, man. Mm -hmm. You only have two knock sensors on a 350R? I guess, yeah. yeah. So on the Gen 3 Mustang GT, you have four. But uh, I'm learning all kinds of crazy stuff about this. There's a crazy different. It's like a coyote, but it's a blend of careful, other stuff. Check this out, dude. Uh, so these are basically kind of like Gen 3 heads, but they're ported. Mm -hmm. But look at the... Uh, Look at all this right here. You uh, get a lot of oil in here, but that's pretty, that's, that's pretty cool. That's normal. Injector ports and take. Um, it yeah. would be normal because this is the worst side for blow by. Yeah, that's why you have those catch cans. For everybody that is watching my channel, has ever seen me do headers like a million times, this is the proper way, a proper way, uh, or you know, 
figure it out. We also or, have a cherry picker. We have different options. The next time I buy through PDR and decide to boost it, yeah. we'll drop it through the K member. Well, we can still do it. Like, Most people are not going to do that. This is better to show the audience. My car needs a bath. <clears throat> oh man, that's tight. It was angry when it got put on. Yeah, it was. Uh, Jeff's been over here working on the, I gave him the easier side for now. So that's gonna be your drivers on the Mustang. Pretty much the same as with the GT350. That is how everything looks. We're actually gonna take the engine up a little bit more. It's my side, I've got the starter out and check this out. This thing is crazy huge. This is actually one of the motor mounts that goes through. It's got a brace on the back of the starter and it is hefty. Everything is going very, very well. Jack is, uh, he's learning a lot today. He's been more handy turning tools today, turning wrenches today than I actually have been. I worked with a lot of people in the past and uh, they weren't as eager to learn. So I'm very excited to work with Jack. My channel is all about giving back to our charity. So that's what's motivating me right now. Yeah. So if you guys are wondering, he is got the same twin turbo kit that I have on my red Mustang over here. That is a Hell Horse Performance twin turbo kit. I'll link everything down in the description as always, but they live underneath the car. 64, 67s, mine are water cooled. Awesome. And his are actually pretty cool because they're air cooled. We have all of the goodies right here. Interesting, he's gonna actually be the first one in the world with an air cooled comp twin turbo GT350R. Smooth sailing guys. We're gonna continue on, keep rocking on, and uh, big things, big things. So now it's recording because it's a fun. Not yet, might be. This looks what? brutal now. Tiger in that storm. There is yes, a tiger in that storm. Dude, you know Carol Baskin. You know I have. Man. Carol F Baskin. I, I jam out to Joe Exotic in my freaking head all the time, man. That's what keeps me motivated. Joe Exotic. <laughs> I'm getting pushed around now. Well, maybe you should put the camera down and hey, oh, film it no. too. Nope. I can put this thing on my head. There it is. There's a tornado right there. Uh, <laughs> it's an oil pan. It's an oil pan. Here we are the next day. The studs on the 350, these are basically 15 and up GT, whereas it's a little bit different. The studs are a little bit different, so we're gonna have to rotate some studs around, no big deal. I think you should just leave it like this. This whole Mad Max look, it looks great. Just put the intercooler there, no front bumper. Just leave it like it is. Yeah, man. Turn your $70,000 Shelby GT into like a box. It's very Mad or Max. Better, Mad I Max. Say. I think Xander's probably got a good idea, but you guys get the gist. We're gonna have to move this around where it matches a Coyote. Now, if you go to a four to one header, a four to one header will be different. It yeah. will, you'll be able to use the same bolt pattern, but don't fret, like it's it's an easy fix, guys. I mean, honestly, it's so, all we're doing is we're taking this stud, this stud, move them internal. We're moving closer together right there and there. And then these two top, we're gonna spread apart so it'll have the same bolt pattern as a GT, like this. A size, because I know people are gonna be like, why are you yeah, putting yeah, GT? You gotta, you gotta check out these manifolds. Well, the three to one, it's basically the same between the two. It's just that the bolt pattern is a little bit different. Why they do that, I have no idea. Maybe somebody knows to comment down below if you know why, but yeah, anyway, mean, so that's it. So we're gonna get started. These. Right here and here are going to be relocated there and there. These top are going to move outward. What up? Howdy. Anybody ever tell you you look like Rob Schumacher? How's the car going? <laughs> nice, it's all right, slow, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Need some Orly boys on it. A little dirty. Yeah, well, I mean, once you see mine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, want a, you want a free turbo kit? Yeah, absolutely. Snatch yeah. and grab. Yeah. <laughs> Take it. Go. Jack doing work. I'll do the driver's side, probably. We're the, I'm sorry, the passenger side. That's the harder side. Definitely go check out his channel, man. Beautiful car. It's going to be twin turbo like mine. He's uh, eager yeah. to learn, eager to do work. We have one twin turbo ski mounted. Looks beautiful. This is actually a new standard for Hell Horse. He's doing this uh, polished compressor housing here with the teal anodized uh, finish here. Now, this is pretty cool. You can actually get a good look at how the air cool technology works. We have fins here. Zerk fitting, that's for your high temp crease we've talked about in the past. Up top there is a non-threaded hole to let uh, heat, I guess, dissipate out is how it works. Kind of interesting, kind of uncharted territory. Uh, pretty cool that Jack's gonna be the guinea pig for this whole thing, but. I'm tired of being the guinea pig, Alex. <laughs> so, ow, I bonked my head. Oh, oh damn. That's like the fifth here. I'll finish it up. For damn. Let me get 
All right, so as Alex is recovering, like I said, these are the air cool technology. Right, um, right, I am right. the first. Okay, there you go. Go back. <laughs> you suck. You suck. I'm good. <laughs> now, all right, so we are battling this side. We've actually had to take this header loose and uh, angle it down a little bit. So if you're doing this on a 350 or 350R, you're gonna run into this issue here. So we have the engine still a little bit suspended in the air, but when we lower this, we're gonna have about two or three credit cards stacked length or width or whatever right above here. So very tight fit. This side, driver's side, you're fine. Coming together, guys. So I've built the cold side piping down here. One of the coolest things I've noticed with working with this 350R is that there's a whole lot different than my GT. Um, I actually had this kit installed with the OEM K-member and with the BMR, which it's sitting on now. BMR K-member will give you a lot more room, but the interesting thing here that I'm noticing is that uh, if you look at the piping here, your cold side piping in relation to the subframe, how almost flush it is, it is a whole lot tighter fit to the body. Uh, my guess is that they actually have this this uh, control arm actually a little bit higher So I don't know when this uh, Suspension compresses this will not hang this will stay. We are gonna wrap this up a little bit give it a little bit of knock protection um, Pretty common with turbo kits that hang low like this, but guys we're making a big progress Six core intercool looks good uh, Mocking things up. This is really sweet, too. He had these made pretty standard that these will Delete your crash bar. Jack, determined veteran, wanted to retain this, so we found a local fab shop to actually make up some brackets that tie in right here. Keep this all one piece in the in the uh, event of a crash or something like that. Not that I don't think that I don't know. I guess he's a crash rated, but I don't want to be the one to find out. Well, I'm not an R and D my car, absolutely not, and you're not either. Yeah. So basically, I've got a video. We kind of talk more about it. Uh, so if you're interested, hit, check out that video. But basically, what you want to do is I wanted to do where it would distribute the load evenly on the on the frame rails. The, the biggest plus to it, I guess I probably should have said this in my video. I probably did in my video. I don't know. Let me pop this out. Make sure I ain't got nothing there. So this crash bar goes back on, so you don't have the bumper sag. This pretty much is a spacer. Uh, with the 350R, we do have to delete the foam, but when we test fit it with the crash bar and this mocked up, perfect, perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna, we're gonna probably do the same thing to mine. A lot of you guys out there want like an OEM fit. I do too. Mine's more of a race car. This is just gonna be a, a fast street car. But you know, to each his own. And I think it's cool to have options. Yeah. And uh, like anything, you know, if you don't have the right tool or product, you go out there and you fab it up and you make it yourself. So we're gonna continue on and uh, get this turbo kit installed. And then we're gonna move on to the top. We have done an IMRC lockout. I wanna show you really fast how I have done this. I took the arms off of the back right here. You have to pry them out or massage them out of the plastic and then you'll lock them out. So up here you have the runners and uh, you just simple little zip tie. This is actually heat rated. So anybody has questions or concerns about this or you could use a heat or uh, you could use a uh, metal zip tie, no big deal. That's IMRC. You won't need it because you're going force induction. If you're going supercharger, it'd be the same deal. But all right, guys, we are going to uh, continue continue with the garage and uh, get this bad boy running here, hopefully the next day or two. So if you're enjoying this content, please like, share, subscribe, thumbs up. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be safe. Have fun. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.